Welcome to lecture number 20 for ECE 463 Modern Control, The Separation Principle. Now as a recap, if a system is controllable, you can stabilize it using full state feedback. This requires measurements of all the system states. If the system is observable, you can estimate those states using only the input, the output, and knowledge of the system's dynamics. If the system is both controllable and observable, you can estimate the states using the observer and stabilize the system using these estimates of the states. But here's the problem. How do you determine both the observer gains and the feedback controller gains? Do they interact? Well, the separation principle says no, they don't. And you can see that as follows. Assume you have the following plant, x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, along with the, an observer that the estimated states, xz dot, is a times xz plus b times u, uh, let's see, plus h times the actual output y minus the estimated output. Along with the feedback controller, u is kr times r, minus kx times the estimated states. And here I'm using the estimated states because presumably I can't measure all the states. Well, if I form the augmented system, I've got my states being the plant states and the estimator states. So you have your x dot equals ax plus bu, xe dot is hc times x, which is h times y, minus, or a minus hc times xe, or a minus ye, plus bu. Substituting for u, I uh, wind up with this for my A matrix. Your, I feed back the estimated states minus bkx and apply the gain bkr. Now let's do a change in variable. Do a similarity transform. So my new states are x and e. x is x, e is x minus xe. And doing that similarity transform, I do my t inverse at plus t inverse b. I wind up with this being the dynamics. And notice this is upper triangular. A property of upper triangular matrices is the eigenvalues are the eigenvalues of the di diagonal. So the eigenvalues are the eigenvalues of a minus b kx and the eigenvalues of a minus hc. What that tells you is the two do not interact. Kx places the poles of the closed-loop system. It has no impact on H, and H has no impact on it. H places the poles of the state estimator, the observer. It has no impact on Kx, and Kx has no impact on it. So likewise, that's the separation principle. You can design the feedback controller assuming, pretending, that all the states were measurable. I can design the state estimator, the observer, ignoring how I came up with the feedback control law. Again, the observer doesn't care what the input is, it drives the states together regardless of the input. So again, it doesn't matter how I generate the input, it doesn't matter what the feedback control law is, the observer will force the error to zero, will force the state estimates to converge to the actual outputs. Uh, so, really just treat the two as two separate problems. So this um, brings up a question. How do you determine H? Now, Kx is pretty obvious how to determine Kx. That comes from the system requirements. Uh, the settling time, overshoot, and so on tell you what the dominant pole should be. And typical with pole placement, the other poles really don't matter. They just have to be faster than the dominant pole, so the dominant pole dominates the response. H, on the other hand, uh, it's not really clear how you determine H. Now, there's one thought. Uh, one camp says that you should make the observer three to ten times faster than the plant. And the argument is as follows. The observer states determine the plant's input, because I'm going to be using full state feedback, but rather than using the plant states, I'll use the observer states. So you want the observer states to be correct before you apply the input. And there's always some noise, so you don't go overboard. But I want to make the observer faster than the plant, so quickly the states converge, and then the plant dynamics take over, and I start tracking. So they should be faster, but don't go overboard, don't make them too fast. That's the reason for three times to ten times faster. 
there is noise in the system, the faster you make the observer, the higher the, the observer gain h becomes, the higher h becomes, the more noise you inject in the system. So make it fast, but not too fast. And a nice trade-off is like 3 to 10 times. So that's one camp. Uh, second camp says, well, it depends. If there's a lot of sensor noise, make h small. If there's a lot of input disturbances, make h large. If there's both sensor noise and input disturbances, then it's a trade-off. Uh, the second approach kind of leads to a Kelman filter, which is an optimal observer. That's coming up later. But again, it's kind of debatable how I actually choose h. So we'll just go through an example of the separation principle. Let's design a feedback controller for the heat equation, 20-stage RC filter. And I want there to be no air for step input, a 2% settling time of 4 seconds, and a DC gain of 1. So here's my fourth order model of the plant. I'm going to do two separate steps. Design the controller, pretending that all the states are measured. Design the observer, ignoring how I came up with the controller. So the first approach, come up with the controller. Let's assume feedback in this form. I'm going to add u is minus kx times x plus kr times r. Pick kx to place the poles with the dominant pole at minus 1. The other three poles don't really matter, so I'm just going to pick minus 1, 2, 3, 4. And make the DC gain 1 with kr. So that's the first approach. Next, let's design the observer. When I design the observer, I ignore how I came up with the feedback controller for the plants. Again, how I came up with u, I don't care. Regardless what u is, force the observer states to track the plant states. In this case, I'll make the observer about three times faster than the plant. Let's put the poles at minus three, four, five, and six. And I get the observer gains. Put the two together. So I've got the plant, the observer, and the controller. My closed loop system becomes A minus BKX, HC, A minus HC minus BKX, B and B. There's my closed loop system. It's now eighth order. Throw that into MATLAB. We call it A8, B8, C8 is I'm going to look at the plant output and the estimated plant output. Run for 10 seconds, and I'm going to give a difference in the state estimates and the actual states. Now take the step response using our favorite step 3 command, and here's what you get. Very quickly, the observer states converge to the plant states, and then the feedback controller kicks in and drives the output to 1. And let's look at that in MATLAB. So here's my file. I've got the plant model, that's actually a 20th order model, my full order observer with my observer gains. I've got my full state feedback gains. And in the main loop, I'm going to be feeding back kr times r minus kx, ideally times x, but I don't know the states or not measuring directly, so I'm going to estimate them. I'm going to feed back the state estimates instead. I've got the integrate the plant, integrate the observer. They have my h times y minus estimated y. Uh, let's see. Integrate the plant states, integrate the state estimator states, and run. So here's what it looks like. The actual system's in blue. The state estimator's in green. I'm estimating the states at node 5, 10, 15, and 20. And kind of see the observer is doing a decent job. It's a little bit different because, again, I'm using a 20th order system and a 4th order model. So there's a slight difference. But the observer gains force the two to, be, to converge. And then using my estimates rather than the, than the actual states, I'm getting a fairly good response. So again, even though I'm not measuring all 20 states, I can still design my full state feedback controller. That's important because if this is a soldering iron, I don't want to place sensors all along the tip, the soldering iron. I just like to have one sensor at the tip. And with that, I'm able to control it. Now, a second example. Again, when you design the observer, it really doesn't matter how you come up with the feedback control law. The observer doesn't care how you get you. 
Just whatever you come up with, apply the same U to the, both the plant and the observer. To illustrate that, let's use the second approach for defining the feedback control law. Let's design a feedback control law with a serpent compensator. So here I'm going to integrate the difference between Y and my set point, and now use full state feedback for the augmented system. Four states from X, one state from Z. And I wind up with these four gains are KX, here's KZ. I'll do exactly the same observer. Again, the observer doesn't care how you came up with the feedback control law. Form the augmented system. So here's the plant states, X, the state estimator states, the servo compensator state. So the, this becomes your A, HC, C, minus BKX, A minus HC minus BKX, minus BKZ minus BKZ. Uh, pretty much whatever you do to the plant, do the same thing to the observer. That's why these minus BKZs appear in both rows, minus BKX appears in both rows. And that's the block diagram for the overall system. When I run it, simulate the ninth order system. I call it A9 because I now have nine states. Uh, let's see. You see the estimated states quickly converge to the plant states, and then I drive the output to one. So simulating, to see how it works a fourth order observer. Again, the observer stays exactly the same. The feedback control law, I'll now use a serpent compensator. So I have my gains kx and kz, and the servo state, I'll start at zero. My feedback control line now becomes minus kz times z, minus kx times xz. The observer doesn't change. Uh, I now need to cal calculate the servo compensator dz, integrate dz, and here's what you get. So let's bring this down, get it out of the way. And we run it. Having the servo compensator, it should force the error to zero. And again, I'm using the state estimator states, not the actual plant states. So I'm using the servo compensator output Z, along with the estimated voltage at no, 20, 15, 10, and 5. And what this is showing is that, uh, yeah, it works with the servo compensator, works with full state feedback. The separation principle says it really doesn't matter how you design the control law, the control law and the observer do not interact. And there's your step response. The resulting 9x9 nine nine system looks like so. Again, here's your A matrix. Here's minus BKX. Here's A minus HC minus BKX. And there's the server compensator state, AZ. Third example. Uh, suppose I only measure position for a current pendulum system. Can I stabilize it? Well, yes, if the system's observable from position, I can estimate all four states. And then once another state estimates, I can use them to design the feedback gain. And from the separation principle, the two designs do not interact. So I can find the feedback gains Kx, however you like. Here I'm using pole placement to find Kx and Kr. I can use pole placement to find the observer gains. I just made the observer three times faster. And now in the nonlinear code, I can have the feedback control law, that's in red, the full order observer in blue, and see how they behave. So here's the cart and pendulum system. I'm going to start out at minus one meter for the cart, uh, the observer, and pick the observer gains to be at minus three, three times faster than the plant. And I'm going to give a little bit of noise on the initial condition, just so you can see the observer states converge. The plant, I'll use pole placement to put the dominant pole at minus one, two, three, and four, gives you Kx and Kr. Then the control law, I'm going to feed back kr times r minus kx times the, times the estimated state. I'm not measuring all four states, I'm only measuring position. The observer 
as the plant dynamics plus h times the difference between the actual position and the estimated position. Uh, integrate x. Uh, z doesn't belong. Integrate the state estimator. Integrate time. And let it run. And here's what it looks like. Get this out of the way. There we go. And the state estimator I offset by 0.02, just so you can see the difference between the observer states, the green, and the action states. Otherwise, they line up right on top of each other, and you can't tell the difference. The thing to note is the observer has converged to the plant. So since the states are the same, from the feedback control loss standpoint, it really doesn't matter which ones you use. They're the same. I get the same results. Initially, there was kind of a little bit of squirrely response in the transient because the observer states hadn't converged yet. Once they do converge, they track. And this is in spite of the plant being nonlinear. The plant has terms that the linear observer doesn't include. It's got Coriolis forces, gravity forces. Those are not in the observer. Uh, but the feedback gains, the observer gains are enough that it compensates and forces the two to track. So again, this is the squirrely part initially, trying to get the observer states to converge. Once they converge, I get a very nice response. So the answer is yes. I can force the I can control the current pendulum only measuring position. So here's another problem for you. For the first part of the transient, it's kind of squirrely. Again, I'll show you that again. Uh, let's go back to MATLAB. Oops. Another MATLAB. Notice right at initially, it's got fairly bad response. That's because the observer states haven't converged yet. So it wiggles around, tries to get the observer states to converge. Then it applies the control law. So here's a problem for you. For the first four thirds of a second, the state estimates are, per, are poor. After about four thirds of a second, you know, four time constants, the observer has converged. Can I, instead of applying the feedback gain kx times the observer at all time, back off? For the first four thirds of a second, don't do a whole lot. I want to get the observer states to converge. Once they converge, then apply the feedback gain. That kind of makes sense intuitively. The problem is that's a very, very difficult problem to solve. The problem is I'm using time varying gains. The cane kx starts out as small while I wait for the observer to converge. Once it does converge, kx increases to what I calculated. If gains are changing in the time domain, that means I have convolution in the frequency domain. This is the nonlinear system. Since it's nonlinear, eigenvalues no longer apply. Many of our definitions of stability no longer apply. Uh, so this is actually a very, very hard problem to solve. That's still an open problem in the, for research. But in summary, for the separation principle, observers and controllers do not affect each other. You can design the controller as if all the states were measured. You can design the observer without any concern about the controller. The two should work together without any impact on each other's stability. And the net result is I have the plant, its feedback control law, and the observer. Instead of feeding back the plant states, I feed back the state estimates. And that way I don't have to play sensors and measure everything as long as I am observable I can estimate the things that I don't measure. That's lecture number 20 for ECE 463 Modern Control, The Separation Principle.